Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dinah. How are, how are you? How are you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, hopefully you can see and hear me. Um, I am just going to go ahead and do a few checks here. If you could give me a message uh, through the chat box and let me know that you can see and hear me, that would be great. And then we can uh, go ahead and move along. I know some, some of you have already started to join and um, you've already introduced yourself. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. OK, great. I got confirmation um, that you can see and hear me on your end. So that is wonderful. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Okay, um, my name is Dinah, and I am a customer success trainer with Easley, and I uh, do these trainings on a regular basis, and I'm really excited to do a how-to webinar today. Um, it's been about a, over a month since I've done this uh, webinar, and we did a crash course in infographics last month where, you know, we talked a little bit more about planning for uh an infographic and creating that. But of course, that left a lot of people with some questions on how to actually use our easily design tool. So wanted to follow it up with uh, training on how to use easily and really walk you through um, all of the features of that tool so you can maximize on its use. Um, before we go ahead and get started, I do want to introduce you to one of my colleagues. Her name's Latasha. She is in the chat window and she is going to help me out uh, with today's webinar and address any questions that you might have that I can't quite get to as I am um, walking you through the demo of Easily, of course. And so feel free to go ahead and put any questions, put any comments, remarks in the chat window. And if she'll do the best that she can to go ahead and address those for you today. If we can't find an answer for you or we don't have an answer for you, then we'll certainly get back and uh, get back in touch with you uh, with a response um, or come back here to this Crowdcast page and try to answer that for you. If you can all say hi to Latasha, that would be great. <laughs> Thank you so much, Latasha, for joining me again here today. Okay, a few other housekeeping items before we go ahead and dive into Easily. Right below this video screen, you'll see that there is a green GoPro button. If you are only registered for the basic free account with Easily and are interested to see whether or not an upgraded version is right for you, you can go ahead and access a free trial. So uh, feel free to go ahead and just click on that button and you'll be able to test out all of the pro features. When I'm walking you through easily here today, I am going to be uh, showing you the pro version. So if you see uh, objects and things that you don't see in your basic account, it's because I'm using the, the pro and upgraded version. And I will be addressing pricing and a little bit more about the upgraded pro version at the end of today's webinar. So if you have questions about that, I'll probably address that towards the end, but we can certainly address any other questions along the way. Also, um, below the video window, you'll see that there are uh, two links that I want you to see. The one is for the polls. So if you can go ahead and take a look at the polls that I have there, I want to know who's here with us uh, today. Uh, it gives me a better understanding as to who's joining us and wants to learn a little bit more about infographics and how to use the design tool. Also helps me reference things that I think can help you out for work or whatever purpose you are using easily for. So if you could go ahead and address that, that would be great. Um, if you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, you're more than welcome to provide more detail in the chat window. I know that people like to connect and oftentimes make your own um, personal connections by uh, telling us a little bit more about yourself. Also, if you can let me know what your experience is with easily, that would also be very helpful. Um, sometimes we get people who have never used easily before, know nothing about it. And that allows me to really walk you through um, all of the absolute basics. And if you've used it before, or if you're an expert or you use it all the time, let us know too. And any tips and suggestions that you have that are working well for you, feel free to comment in the chat window. We always like to hear about the successes and uh, any tips that you might have as, as you use easily. Okay, so with that, I think that I have addressed all of the housekeeping items I wanted to. Um, also, thank you so much for uh, giving us a little bit more information about where you're coming from. I see that we have um, Barry from Minnesota, and we have Contessa from Rome in Italy. 
wonderful. And, you know, we have Maria from Orlando, Florida. So it's really nice because we do get a lot of people from all over the world on, on this training. And it's just a, a great opportunity for people to connect. So thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Victor, for joining us as well here. Okay. So by now, I think we've had quite a few people kind of uh, trickling in. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. And anyone else who joins us along the way, then we'll just, you know, address any of their questions down the road. Okay, so I'm also going to minimize my window because I want you to be able to uh, really see the easily designed tool to the best of your ability there. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize my video screen. I just wanted to say a quick hello and introduce myself and we'll we'll go ahead and get started here. So give me just one second here. Okay. Okay, so before we actually launch into the design tool, one thing that I do want to mention, if you need any additional assistance after today's webinar training, is that we do have various tools to really help you along the way. So one of the things I do want to showcase is our uh, YouTube channel. And we have posted all of the previous webinars that we've done in the past. So you can always go back to a webinar I've done if you want to go back to the crash course in infographics, if you didn't attend that one and you want to little, learn a little bit more about, you know, building up a plan to create an infographic, we dive into that process in that training. We also have uh, really uh, brief tutorials on how to conduct certain tasks within Easily, and then just also uh, additional tutorials on how you can use Easily for many different purposes and the benefits of using infographics for uh, work uh, and for personal reasons, for personal branding, social media, whatever that might be. So our YouTube channel is a great resource for that. So feel free to visit that after today's webinar. We also have two eBooks that I would like to showcase, and you can actually gain access to these right from the Easily Design tool, and I'll show you uh, where that's located shortly. But we also do send a link to these uh, for anyone who's registered for this webinar. So you will get access to these books in a follow-up email as well. So don't worry about having to jot down that long URL. But we have an infographics for your classroom ebook for any teachers and any educators that might be on today's training. And we also have the Crash Course and in Infographics ebook, which is what we base our crash course webinar off of. The book, of course, goes into a little bit more detail. So these are two great resources to really guide you through the process of creating an infographic. Now, at this point, what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the Easily Design tool. Now, I've already logged in, but this looks very similar to what the home page, of course, will look like. If you want to access those ebooks, uh, those ebooks are located on our homepage. So if you take a look and you just scroll down the easily designed tool, you'll see that there is a link to the crash course in infographics ebook, as well as infographics in the classroom ebook. Click on those links and you'll be able to sign up to receive that ebook. Uh, uh, in, in your inbox. I also want to point out that we do have a blog uh, where we have our videos as well as all of the wonderful articles that Latasha writes are all accessible here. So you can also access that from the easily designed tool. Okay, so now for those of you who are unfamiliar with easily or have never used it before, uh, I do want to walk you through some of the basics here. But before we do that, I'm very curious to know, you know, what your interest is in creating an infographic or creating visuals. So if you could go ahead and tell me a little bit more about your interest in creating infographics in the chat box, that would be great. Whether it's for social media, maybe your blog, maybe you want to create them for your students in the classroom. Maybe you're looking to create some marketing materials for your business or your company and you want to uh, communicate some information a little bit more visually. Whatever that is, um, feel free to go ahead and share that in the chat window. Uh, it really helps us get a better understanding as to 
you know, what you're looking to use our tool for, but then also pe other people on this training and this webinar also get some ideas as well. It really helps people uh, think beyond just infographics, the, you know, what you might basically think about infographics and really get people's juices flowing about other ways that you can use the easily design tool. So uh, feel free to go ahead and uh, provide us some more detail. And I know some people might be, um, taking their time to respond, but you know, whenever you get a chance, go ahead and do that. So Barry, it looks like you're looking to uh, maybe create some info infographics or some uh, visuals for real estate marketing. Um, Contessa is looking to use it for our uh, nonprofit at work. Um, Rich is looking to use it for data heavy reports so that it's a little bit more digestible. Um, great. Uh, Bridget, you're looking to use it for non-linguistic representations in the classroom. And Connie is looking to use it for client presentations. So these are all just great examples of how you can use the easily designed tool. And I think it's really a, a great um, indication that you've really thought about the importance of communicating visually with your customers or your students or whoever your audience might be. Um, you know, a lot of times, you know, people are quickly scanning and they're skimming through social media, through blog posts, through emails, through marketing pieces, through newsletters, whatever it is. And oftentimes what catches our attention is a visual. And if you can create a visual for something that you've already written in text, um, you know, you really can grab someone's attention. Um, people's attention spans are so much shorter. So anything that you can do to make your content stand out is really very important. Now, the thing is, of course, is that a lot of us are not necessarily designers or have a design background. And so it makes it very hard for uh, many of us to create those visuals. And that's where Easily comes in. We come in with this very easy to use design tool where you can just go ahead, drag and drop images. Um, we have existing templates that you can use to customize, uh, provides you with the starting point if you kind of don't know how to organize your content. So let's go ahead and dive right in at this point. And thank you for sharing all of your um, information there. Okay, so when I log in here, and again, it's free to sign up, so you don't have to pay anything if you just wanna sign up and register with an email address, and you'll be able to get started with the design tool. Now, the free version, you don't get access to all of the templates or all of the objects and images and graphics and icons that you can use, but you do get a few that you can test out. You also have um, the ability to upload your own images. So while we give you a wealth of objects and images and icons that you can go ahead and just drag and drop, you can always upload a logo, a company logo if you have one, or uh, an existing image that you want to use, or maybe you've paid for a stock image and you wanna use it, uh, you can upload any of those images into the design tool. Now, anything that you create gets added to your visuals library. So this is just a scrolling library of everything that you create. And so um, things that I create are kept in here, but I also like to point out that what I like to do is I like to save any templates that I see and I'm like, wow, I really like that template. Um, I may not need to use it today, but I like to save the visual so that I don't have to find it again because we have millions and millions of visuals in our public gallery. And so um, while you can go ahead and uh, save that, you know, you don't want to have to find it again, um, knowing that you might have to use it again in the future. As you scroll down, of course, you'll see that there is um, all of the templates that you can view. Uh, some of them are professionally designed templates already created for you. And then we also have um, visuals where people will make their visuals public so that they're accessible by others so that they can go ahead and use them as well as templates. Now, with all of the great templates you have here, you can do a search by keyword. So if you're looking to find something specifically or a particular theme, then you can go ahead and do a search or you can browse the visuals by category. So this is a great way to be able to narrow all of these visuals down because there are so many. I also want to point out that you can set your 
infographic or your visual to a custom size. Now this is really important because uh, depending on how you plan to use your infographic, you um, might have some specific requirements that you have to work with in order to make your visual uh, uh, optimized. And so, for example, if you're looking to uh, use an image for Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, whatever that might be, they might have some optimal uh, sizes. And so if you know that already, then you can go ahead and uh, adjust your infographic or your visual size to fit those uh, requirements or dimensions and you can do it in pixels uh, millimeters inches whatever you're working with um, I often um, make these changes for maybe PowerPoint presentations. so if I'm creating a visual that I want to slide perfectly right into a PowerPoint presentation then I'll go ahead and um, make these changes so that I know it will fit perfectly into Google Slides or whatever tool that I'm using um, you also have some sizes that you can choose from so if you're looking to keep it to a letter or legal size um, or size of a photo, standard photo, then we already have those pre-measured sizes as well. So this is a very important um, tool, especially if you're looking to work with a very specific custom size for your visual. Okay, so another thing I'd like to point out here is that you can always start fresh. So you don't need to start with a template. So you can start fresh and this will give you a blank canvas and you know while we provide a few instructions here you can of course delete all of the objects that are in here but we do give you a way to cl quickly clear your canvas just go to the top black and white menu here click on clear and you'll see that this clears your canvas and you can get started um, with your canvas and start to drop a background uh, or any objects or images that you're looking to work with. Okay, so the other thing that I'd like to point out here is that once you're actually in the design tool, so at this point we're in the design tool, you still have the ability to pull in a template um, or change your mind on a template. So I started fresh here, but you'll see here with the pro version you will gain access to hundreds of professionally designed templates that you can go ahead and customize very easily and they're organized very nicely so if you want a resume template um, or you want to get ideas for a resume infographic then you can click on this and you'll see that you will be able to browse all of the examples of resume infographics that you can work with. And it's just a matter of dragging one of these templates onto your canvas. You can do a timeline or a process. Um, let's say you work with a lot of information that pertains to food or maybe you're writing about food, restaurants, whatever it might be, then maybe you want some ideas on a food infographic. We have um, financial reports. We also have uh, real estate. So um, Barry, uh, you had mentioned that you're looking for uh, infographics for real estate marketing. So if you wanna get some ideas as to what um, some of that might look like, then you can go ahead and click on something like real estate and then work with that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as our example, um, since we have someone that is, you know, could be interested in something like that. So here we have all of the infographics that are examples for real estate. So you can work with really any of these. And, you know, this is really just going to give you an idea of what you can do, of course, the possibilities really are endless. So I'm gonna go ahead and maybe drag one of these onto our canvas as an example. So as you can see, I just quickly grabbed one and I dragged it onto the canvas. Now this is going to load for us here onto the canvas and you'll see that I'll be able to customize the text, I'll be able to customize the objects that are in there, whether I wanna just go ahead and delete them or if I wanna add additional um, graphics to it. In some instances, I can even change the color for some of these infographics. So here we are. You'll see here that this is text. I can just click on any of the text within 
this infographic. And when you click on an object or a text, you'll get a design tool menu. And this appears whenever you're clicking on an actual object or text. Now this is important to know because depending on the text, depending on the object that you click on, this is what's available to you to work with. So for text, I can go ahead and I can clone the text. So if I see an object and I wanna do it multiple times, then I can go ahead and clone it. Um, I can hyperlink text. So depending on how you're going to be sharing your infographic, you can add a URL to any of the text. And this is really great, especially when you're trying to add that call to action to your infographic. So your audience has looked at your info infographic and you want them to actually take action. You want them to do something. So adding a hyperlink can, you know, direct them to your company's website, to your blog. Maybe if you're an educator or a teacher, you want students to launch into additional information on the topic to learn a little bit more. Um, whatever that might be, you can hyperlink the text. And I recommend, you know, putting maybe an indicator that you can click on it, of course, um, just so that people absolutely absolutely don't overlook it or ignore it. You can say, you know, click here or, or something like that. But, you know, you can go ahead and put that hyperlink on any of, of the text. You can also add hyperlinks to objects. So if you want your audience to interact with your infographic a little bit more in terms of launching out to additional content that you might have, then you can certainly um, also hyperlink objects. So the text, of course, you can go ahead and, you know, bold, italicize, underline, um, you can also move the positioning of the text or the objects, whether it's forward or backwards. Um, you can change the opacity of the text or an object. Um, you can change the color. So if I wanted to go ahead and change the color of this to say, I don't know, I'm just going to pick a <laughs> random color here. We can go ahead and do that. And then also I want to point out that the colors, um, you're not limited to just what you see here on the grid. If you click on this more button, and this is for any objects as well that you might change the color of, you can go ahead and enter um, any color codes that you might have. So if you're working with very specific color codes for your business, your company, because you need it to match branding, then you can go ahead and apply those codes specifically. Um, but you're not limited to the grid that you see here. So I do want to point that out. Sometimes people do overlook that and they think that there aren't enough colors in here. Um, okay, so as you see, if when I, when I double click on um, that text, you'll see that that window opens up and uh, you'll be able to uh, change the text, uh, completely delete it, and then, you know, add your own text. Now, my computer, I think, is running just a little bit slow here because of the webinar system that's running here. So I'll do my best to... Um, uh, you know, make some changes here, but I, I am noticing that this is uh, running a little slower than what I would normally want it to. Okay. So I'm going to enter just short text here because <laughs> this is going so slow here. Okay, so as you can see, you can easily make those changes. Now, um, with the objects, so I'm going to go ahead and click on uh, one of these objects here. And now you'll see when I click on this object, this is an object that I can actually change the color of. So if I wanted to go ahead and change this color to red, then I can go ahead and do that. Now, just a, a good indication of what you can change a color of for an object is if the object is a solid color, then it's very likely that you'll be able to change the color of that and customize it. Um, we have a lot of icons and objects that are a standard black, um, which are used a lot um, in infographics. And I'll show you an example of that shortly. Um, but, uh, you know, you may not want to just use black. You may want to put make it white uh, and set it on a colored background. So you can change the colors of those. Um, I won't say that all of them you can change the colors of, but if it's a solid color, it's very likely that you'll be able to change the color of that. Okay. Um, and then also, uh, so, you know, just to compare it to something else, of course, here, um, I'll click on this object. Now this building here on the other side of the infographic, let me just scroll a little bit here, you'll see that this one, when I click on it, you'll see that the, uh, the 
um, the option to change the color is not there. So you'll see that that is an object. The colors are mixed. There's a couple of colors in there. So I can't change the color in that. So that's important for you to know. Um, okay, so those are the basics. Um, if you're working, of course, with a template, you know, my suggestion, and this is really good if you don't have a design background, is you know, go into the templates and play around with the templates and kind of see how some of the um, graphics are being built and, you know, how they're being created. Because there's a lot of layering involved um, with the infographics. And this will really give you um, some great ideas as to how you can maybe customize your infographic or maybe create your own from scratch. So, you know, for example here, you know, this is an object itself you know the the world map and i'm moving it around hopefully you can see it on your end maybe it might be a little slow um or delayed but um you can move that around and then you're seeing how they're layering you know the buildings and the indicators on top of that so go in these play around you can delete things change things but it, it really is very helpful to be able to come in here and just kind of see how things are organized and how the designers are creating these infographics you can use these i definitely suggest customizing it as much as possible though so that it really stands out and um you know really works for you know your business you know cha changes the colors to maybe you know, match up with your uh, business colors, your company's colors, or whatever the theme might be, because um, you really can make this your own with all of the changes that you have. Okay, so th that's a little bit about the templates. Let's talk about the objects. So objects, these are all the icons and graphics that you can add into your infographic. So you may choose to just stay and work with whatever a template might have, but you might need to add content. Um, you might need to um, add additional uh, content if you're you're starting off from scratch. So you can do a keyword search, and this is great if you know exactly what type of object or icon you're looking to find based off of what you're looking to communicate. I recommend using a couple of keywords when you're doing this. So um, you know you might stumble across some other images that might work really well. Um, but if you don't know what's available and you just want to get an idea. Um, definitely browse all of the categories. Great way to learn what's available. And everything is nicely organized by beauty. If you're looking for buildings, here's a section for building where you can maybe add some more buildings to this like real estate infographic. Um, characters, clothes, clothing, construction, um, you'll see holidays, you'll see education. I won't list all of these, of course, but hopefully you're getting a really good indication of what's available here. Um, food, if you're dealing with food, there's an extensive library of food icons. And I actually will show you, uh, I have a few slides that has some samples of uh, the objects that are in here. But I'm gonna go to something like people for our example here. I'm gonna go into people. And I am going to just show you, you know, we have about um, 38 pages of different types of people icons that you can go ahead and add to your infographic. And again, keep in mind that this is the pro account. So what you see here is what's available with the upgraded version. So if you've used Easily and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that all of these were in here. Keep in mind it is with the upgraded um, pro version. So. Um, as you can see, there's different styles uh, for what you might be looking for. So there's some that are a little bit more cartoonish, some that look a little bit more real. So, you know, you, you've got a lot of options to choose from here. So just for our example, I'm going to go ahead and maybe pull in a few. You'll see all I need to do is just grab the objects that I want and I just drag them onto my canvas. So I've dragged three <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and move back to my canvas here. And now I can go ahead and place them onto my canvas as I want. And again, this is moving a little slow on my end. Now these objects here for the people, they're multiple colors. So um, as you can see, you, you know, you don't have the option to change the colors on these. So um, that makes it a little harder there. Delete that. 
Yeah, my computer's sticking a little bit. I think the webinar program is kind of um, delaying, delaying this a little bit. But you could go ahead and enlarge an object. And you know what I want to point out with um, being able to enlarge uh, the objects is that you can scale these and make them as large as you want, and you don't have to worry about it pixelating. So that is really, really great. Um, you can go ahead and click on an object and make it as large as you want, and it will always look great on your canvas. So as you can see, I am enlarging this. And as it adjusts, it still looks great um, on my canvas here. So you can really work with the objects there. Okay, I'm gonna delete that. Okay, now um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a few more things here. Okay, now um, we do have a grid that's available. So, you know, if you want to align your objects and make sure everything is kind of evened out, we do allow you to place this grid um, on top of uh, your infographic. So you can certainly go ahead and work with that. And then also, if you wanted to go ahead and position objects um, and move them backwards and forwards, then you definitely have those tools here to position them as you wish. So you, you have a lot of um, options there. And then also if you're looking at, you know, just change the opacity of an object as well, um, you can certainly do that. So if you wanna see something um, through, uh, a, uh, let's say a block or um, an image, then you can certainly go ahead and change that opacity. Okay, so those are all of those options there. And I hope I'm answering some of the, those questions there for you, Reg. Okay, so those are the objects. Definitely check these out. Um, if you're going to go ahead and do the trial version, do a search for objects that you would typically um, use and, you know, go ahead and drag and drop them on there. Um, for icons, um, I'm going to go ahead and let's, you know, let's just say I'm going to look for an idea. Okay, so idea, what comes up when I do a search for idea? You know, we get a lot of light bulbs and you might get some other interesting um suggestions as well that you could maybe use. And so um, what I'd like to do is just go ahead and I'm gonna drop this icon in here. And let's see, I'm gonna click on it. Okay, so when you see the, a lot of those black icons that come up, that's perfectly fine, you know. Um, you can definitely change the color of these to make it work with your color scheme um, for your infographic. Oftentimes, sometimes these icons get placed on like maybe a circle or a square and, you know, just uh, layering it up on an infographic, of course. Um, so you have all of the color options. Let's say, you know, we wanted to just turn it white. Now I can go ahead and, you know, put this on top of yellow and it, it'll stand out. So even though you see a lot of the black icons under the objects library, just know that you certainly can go ahead and um, possibly change the colors on a, a good majority of those. OK, let's move on to media. Um, I get really excited about this because um, I think it's just a great opportunity for you to be able to um, create uh, infographics that uh, might include actual stock photos into it, and then also a way to incorporate maybe um, tutorials, maybe an explainer video that you might have, or maybe videos that you're looking to share with your students and you wanna frame it nicely on an infographic or it's part of the information that you're looking um, for your audience to view. So um, first, I want to go ahead and point out the stock photos. Um, the stock photos, um, with the upgraded version for Pro, uh, you will get um, thousands of photos that you can go ahead and incorporate into your infographic. Graphic. Um, I always like to do a search for a computer. You know, I know people are always looking for some nice photos that might incorporate um, a computer or a laptop if you're talking about productivity or, you know, whatever that might be. Um, so this is a great way for you to be able to um, pull in a nice stock image. Now this is, I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, pull something random into my infographic. Um, so uh, not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily go, of course, with this um, infographic here. I think it's just a little slow here. Let me see if I can do this again. 
Okay, there we go. So now I can go ahead and add my um, image to my infographic. And of course we can uh, click on the image and we can resize it, of course, to, to suit our infographic. So it doesn't necessarily have to be that big, but you can go ahead and make that adjustment. Um, you can change the opacity of an image. You can hyperlink the image. You can move this to the back, of course. So if you wanted to go ahead and move this to the background of your infographic, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Okay, as you can see, I'm kind of setting this to the back of my infographic. So there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, you know, you really, if you're gonna add some stock photos, you know, just really think about how you're incorporating it um, and does it really fit the, the theme and the look of your infographic. So um, just really think about it. Um, sometimes it doesn't always work um, well, and sometimes it looks, it works fantastically. And I love to use the stock images for um, uh, images that I'm using to promote my webinars. I like to use them um, to add some information if we're sharing it for, uh, through Twitter, social media. So they really can be useful. So just think about how you plan on using it. And, um, all of those images are free to use. They're royalty free when you upgrade to pro. So it's really a big time saver because it's already in the library, stock image library. You don't have to worry about whether or not you want to pay for the image or not. It's already included. You just pick it and you add it in. Um, so I find that it's been very helpful and it's saved a lot of money as well. Um, with the media, uh, with the YouTube URLs, this is also great. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the steps here, um, but it's as simple as finding the YouTube video that you want to incorporate into your infographic and just pasting that URL right into um, this blank space here. So um, once you add your URL, it will go ahead and upload and you will be able to adjust your video size to fit your infographic. So, you know, if you just want it maybe at the bottom of your infographic in a corner, because that's maybe your call to action, maybe you want your audience to link out to your explainer video or, you know, some type of a tutorial, maybe you want your students to view, you know, you can go ahead and make that adjustment and make it fit your infographic. Um, okay, so I think that we've covered a lot of um, the features. I'm just going to showcase a few more, and then I'm going to provide you with some information about the pro account and then address any additional questions that you might have. But with that, let me just um, check in with the group and see, you know, where we're at, if there are any additional questions, anything that I might need to showcase. Um, based off of the questions that are coming in, it does look as I'm reviewing all of the comments that Latasha's kind of covered a lot about uh, a lot of it. Um, okay, I think with the alignment and the layering, I think um, that was with the grid. So um, with the grid, that allows you to kind of view if everything is kind of evened out. That's a really great tool. So the grid feature there, I, I know I covered that a little bit. And then also the positioning. So if you're looking to you know move an object forward, backwards, um, you'll have those positioning tools there. And that goes for the text. It goes for the objects, the icons, the stock images. Um, you can easily position them in that way. Okay, so I think that I think that should hopefully answer your question there, Rich. Okay, good. Well, I, I think I'll go ahead and keep moving on. Um, and then we will dive into some more information about the upgraded version and maybe any other questions that you might have. Okay, so um, backgrounds. This is also a great feature to customize your infographic. You can go ahead and change the background color uh, to a solid color. So again, you know, we have the color grid, but if you have a very custom color you're looking to work with, then you can go ahead and enter that specific code that you might have. Um, if you're looking to upload an image that you might already have, then you can upload your own image and set that as your background. And then we also have some background designs that you can use. And we have um, some really um, great designs that you can just go ahead and select and really change up uh, the background of your infographic. Um, one of the things that I will say is that um, 
you know, depending on your infographic and what you're looking to showcase, you know, for, for this infographic here that we have as a template, a really busy background is not necessarily going to work great um, in this instance. But let's say you have um, maybe just a very small piece of information and you want to frame it with, you know, a nice background. Um, and then you might frame it with like a, a block that will block out some of the space so that it's not as busy, then, you know, a colored background will work fantastically. So um, I know people will use some of these backgrounds to create like a like a postcard size and maybe you might drop in a personal image and then put your text on top. So there's many other ways to use the backgrounds beyond just an infographic specifically, you know, just creating any type of a visual. Some of these backgrounds really can be great. Um, so many different ways to use that. So um, you can also draw onto your um, infographic. So if I wanted to do um, something like steps or a straight line or an arrow, you can certainly do that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, and I'm going to do this off to the side so that hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Um, but you'll see I clicked on the steps and I just drew this line. Now again, it's currently red, but you can change the color as you need. So if you needed to change this to something that uh, will work better with your infographic color scheme, you can certainly do that. You can also change the stroke of any of your lines. So if you draw an arrow or a straight line, and let's say you wanna make it a dotted line instead, then you can do that as well. Um, you can also change the weight. So if you wanted to make these um, just smaller in weight size, then you can go ahead and do that. Um, you can make it larger as well. So uh, a lot of ways to customize it. Again, you know, sometimes people just kind of stick with what happens when you create a line, <laughs> but, you know, to really make your infographic look great, you really can customize it for, for how you need it to look. Okay, so those are the, the drawing tools. I'll, I'm only showing you the step, but you'll see that there's straight line, arrow, and also more of a wavy line. Um, we also have just some standard shapes that you can work with. And, you know, this is great when you're adding, adding you know, the block. So, for example, this yellow um, block that you see here at the top of this infographic is simply a shape of a rectangle. And then you just change the color of that rectangle and then stretch it across your, your infographic. Um, but then there are certainly some other shapes that you can work with. So um, all of these shapes, you can change the color. You can, you know, change the opacity on it so you can see through the shape um, onto uh, the image. So a lot of things that you can do with that. Um, your text tool. We talked a lot about the text already with the existing text from the template, but if you needed to drop your own added text, you can add a title, header, body, bullets, uh, a number list, or an alpha list to your infographic, then just double click, and then you just start to change your text. From there, you can customize the font, the font size, the color of the text, and change it however you'd like. You also have um, a chart tool. Now, with the basic account, um, you, you know, you won't get all of these options, but with the upgraded version, this is where you can put some of that data heavy content. So if you're looking to project sales numbers or, um, you know, financial numbers for your business, whatever that might be, there are various tools here that you can use. And these are nice because um, all you need to do is drag it onto your canvas and um, you'll see that you can double click on this and you'll be able to go ahead and upload content from a spreadsheet and you'll be able to customize the colors. You'll, you know, if you don't have like a lot, a large spreadsheet to work with, then you can just go ahead and, you know, change the values from here very easily. You don't have to, you know, actually upload it. But, you know, if you want to just go ahead and type that in, the labels can be changed. So right now the default is red, but let's say you wanted to talk about Facebook whatever that might be in Twitter, and those are your labels, and you can adjust those. Um, you can change the colors to match up with your color scheme. So I'm going to go ahead and just select something like purple just to showcase that. Um, you can add rows, remove rows, show the legend on your um, infographic, and show the labels if you want. So I'm going through this very, very quickly, but we do have a tutorial 
on YouTube where we'll spend a little bit more time on this. But hopefully this is giving you a really good indication as to how you can go ahead and easily customize this. And um, when you click on your actual uh, chart or graph on, on the tool, you can, of course, move it around and then resize it as needed. So if you only want it to take up a little space on your infographic, you can go ahead and shrink it down. Or if it's going to be your main piece of your infographic, then you can go ahead and enlarge that as needed. So great tool, um, really allows you to make the information a little bit more dynamic. Of course, you have like I objects and icons of um, charts and graphs when you do a search through the objects, but those are static. So if you were looking to customize the actual data, then you can actually go ahead and um, do that using the, char the chart tool. Um, I talked about this already, but keep in mind, if you don't find what you're looking for in our objects library or our stock photo library, then you can always upload your own files again. So if you wanted to add your logo or specific images that you need to work with, go ahead and upload those. And you can upload with the free version um, as well as the upgraded pro version. Okay, so that's um, all the details I wanted to talk about in terms of the design tool. I hope that this was um, a, gave you a good indication as to how to get started very quickly with our tool. Like I said, very easy to use. Um, use the templates to get ideas, see how things are designed. Um, I, I, and I still do this all the time with the templates. I like to go in and I like to deconstruct them. And I like to kind of see how things were created by the designers. A lot of the time it's, you know, they're layering objects and icons on top of each other to make it kind of look not 3D, but just have some depth to the to the infographic. And I've learned a lot just by deconstructing the templates within the design tool. So it's been great. Um, so uh, you're probably wondering, OK, now I've created my infographic. What do I do now? How do I share it? How do I download it? How do I save it? How do I come back to it? So there's a few things I do want to point out. Going back up to the black and white um, toolbar, I do want to point out that we will periodically save your infographic, but um, I highly recommend that you, you know, name your visual and save it periodically yourself. Um, it will give you a timestamp of when it was last saved. Um, but if you're about to like step away and you just did something, then I recommend that you save it because it's very possible that the very last change or addition that you made may not have been auto saved. So always save before you step away, but we will periodically save it. And then once you save your visual, it will go into your uh, library so you can access it down the road. And if you find a template, like I said, that you want to work with in the future, save it into your visuals and then you can easily find it um, another day. Okay. Um, this open feature, uh, this is um, important in the event that you have, you're working maybe with some really sensitive information and you don't necessarily want to save it to our servers. We have a lot of government accounts and so it's very important for them to be able to save the work outside of the easily designed tool and then they'll come back in and then they'll upload and import that work. So this will allow you to save a very specific file that will only work in the easily design tool. It's, and this is important, like I said, if you're working with very sensitive information, you don't necessarily wanna save it into um, easily itself. Now, um, of course, we talked about the clear button and clearing your canvas. I do wanna point out that uh, the download feature. So when you're trying to save it and download your, download your infographic, because now you're ready to start using it, uh, with the basic version, you have the ability to save as a JPEG, which is going to be your low quality. Great for social media because you don't you want those to upload quickly on social media um, for your website. You don't want a high quality image, you know, bogging down your site either. So the low qualities work well. Um, but if you are looking for something that is going to be printed, you need a higher quality image download, then you, with the pro version, you do have the ability to download a high quality um, PNG image. And then also if you need to download to PDF with the pro version, you have the ability to download to a PDF version. Now you can also very easily share your infographic um, through the web, either by, you know, sharing it through email, 
you can also invite a friend to edit. And, you know, if you want someone to make some changes or you're working on a group project, then you can invite someone to edit the same infographic that you've been working on. You can have up to 30 people in the same infographic working on it at the same time. That might get a little hectic, but you can go up to that amount. You know, some teachers, you know, when they're introducing easily to students, sometimes all the students will kind of go in there and, you know, as they're learning how to use it, that's, you know, what they do. Um, and but once maybe you get into a group of like five, then that's a great way for students to collaborate on a group project very easily. And uh, you can also get a shareable link uh, and share it through the browser, if you're looking to embed your infographic into your website or you're looking to embed it into your learning management system, then we will provide you with an embed code so you can go ahead and embed it as well. And uh, also for any teachers or educators who might have a class that they want to be able to, you know, kind of control and, you know, make sure their students' content is private, but you can still access their content to see their progress. You can create groups um, with your class or classes if you have multiple classes, of course. So um, I won't go into detail for that. We do have a very nice tutorial on YouTube that will go into more detail. If you have questions about that, though, let us know. Email us at support it easily and we're happy to help you out with setting that up for your class. And then also, lastly, just being able to resize your image. Again, I recommend doing that at the beginning um, as opposed to down the road. <laughs> so but that tool is available there. OK, so with that, let me go ahead and go back to my um, presentation window here, because I think um, some of you might have some questions about pro. So I'm going to go into that. Um, before I do that, I do want to just share some um, best practices for infographic design if you don't have any design background and, you know, are just kind of starting at the beginning. Um, you know, limit your color palette. Uh, maybe like two to three colors is really nice. Of course, some objects have multiple colors, and of course, that totally makes sense. Um, but, you know, you don't want to have too many um, colors in your infographic and it all not match up nicely. So usually two to three colors is a good rule of thumb for that. Also, keep your imagery simple. Sometimes really complicated imagery is almost too much, too busy. Um, and, you know, kind of, you know, people kind of lose interest with that. So, you know, make sure that there's a lot of white space. It really is uh, makes your infographic nice. It provides order and it doesn't make it look too busy. Along with um, keeping limiting your color palette, you know, two fonts is usually more than enough um, for your infographic. Um, multiple fonts kind of makes it, again, too busy and doesn't really match up nicely. So usually try to keep it to two uh, fonts, as well as um, think about the size of your infographic. I like to say, you know, it's really great to keep your infographic to about a page. I know that there are a lot of infographics that are scrolling infographics and there's a lot of great information. And if it's done really well, then it will hold your attention all the way to the end. But the important thing is that you want your audience to get to the very bottom where your call to action might be, whether that's visit your website or, you know, read a, an art article or learn more uh, on this website or watch this video. So, if they don't get all the way to the bottom, then they're not going to get to the call to the action, call to action. So it's important that, you know, keep your infographic small. And, you know, if you need to build out a second infographic, that's perfectly fine. Um, OK, so the next thing I want to talk about is going pro. Now, it's only three dollars a month, um, thirty six dollars a year, and you get access to all of the images, all of the icons. Um, here are examples of the people icons. I know I showed you a few, um, but there's many different types of people icons that you can add. There's technology icons. There's various food icons that you can add. There's the business icons. So hopefully, you know, you're seeing that regardless of what you're looking to communicate, whatever your industry might be, there are just so many different objects to choose from. And then you'll get all of those templates and you know, or illustrations that you can work with, you can customize, get ideas from, and you can customize those all for free. And what's best is that you can use it actually also for commercial use. So you don't have to worry about giving easily credit, although it's excellent if you do. We love um, any type of um, 
promotion or if you want to mention easily of course help you build the infographic that's great but you know you do you, it's not required and you can absolutely use the infographics for commercial use um, and you know really we are used by government accounts business accounts um, educators so really it's, it's great for anyone who is looking to communicate visually now again our businesses are $36 a year per user, that's per user account, of course. So that's only $3 a month, very affordable considering all of the objects that you get. Um, if you just think about a stock image and what that might cost you, you know, you're know, you seeing how um, accessible all of that content is for such a low price. Uh, for our nonprofits and our educators, we do offer a discount. Um, you know, you do wanna make this tool affordable to you. So if you're interested, please contact us directly. You can email me. I will send an email out because we always get a ton of questions afterwards about the discount for nonprofits and educators. Um, but you know, if you want, if you're interested right now, just you know, email our support and we can get you that link uh, for the discount. And then also for teachers who want to offer the pro to their students, um, if you pay the full price per year, so the thirty-six dollars a year we will allow you to also offer and extend the pro account to 30 students um, in your classroom. So, you know, that will allow your students to have access to the objects and the images. And, you know, that's great as well, because I know it's a big concern for educators that students are just grabbing images and objects and graphics from, you know, Google images. And, you know, with that already included in the pro account, they'll have all of that accessible and they can really spend more time just, you know, really developing their message and communicating visually through their infographic and analyzing and processing the information that you want them to. So uh, hopefully this is all great. And then, you know, I know many of you are busy and while the Easily tool is so easy to use, you may just not have the time to sit down and kind of get it done. So we do have a design service that we recently launched and uh, you know we've already hired designers. So all we need is the information that you want to communicate through an infographic and we will um, design that infographic for you. We'll make sure it's aligned to your business uh, in terms of your industry and the colors and the fonts and make sure it matches up properly. And what's nice about it is that because it's created using easily, you'll be able to upload that infographic and reuse it again if you need to in the future. So for example, if you need to communicate financial results on a quarterly or monthly basis, then you can get one designed for you, we'll design it, and then it, all you need to do is plug in the numbers yourself down the road. And so it'll always look nice because the designer has already created that for you, saved you a lot of time there. And then all you need to do is just go ahead and plug in the details. So that's our design service. I will provide a link to that as well in our follow-up email. So um, I hope that we covered a lot of in, uh, great information here for you. And I hope it's all information that you can use. And I hope we also saved you a lot of time in learning all of these tricks. There are additional tips and design tips and tricks on how to use easily available on our YouTube channel, as well as our help file. So um, if you need to contact us directly, feel free to do so. Contact us at support at easily. Um, if you have any questions about today's webinar or have ideas for future webinars, email me. I always like to hear them, Dinah at Easley. And I hope that uh, you have a wonderful rest of the day. And I think I'm finishing up right on time here. So thank you again for your time. I'm going to stick around for maybe a few more minutes to see if any other questions come through. And we'll be uh, happy to go ahead and address those. But I know people are starting to hop off and need to start to maybe get on to their next meeting. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining us here today. And uh, thank you for learning a little bit more about Easily. Have a great day.